Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I was going to do a flamingo American flag watercolor picture and I thought you would like to join me in the process. When I finished the painting, I realized I didn't show how I drew the sketch. Here I added in my steps in laying out the reference for my flamingo and flag. Here I am using a 11 by 15 inch watercolor paper and a half circle 6, six inch protractor at a slight angle. And you can place this wherever you like. I just kind of kept it from the edge about two and a half inches. And I marked a line down to the 75 and then did a half moon to 55. And the only reason why I used this was to keep my hands steady for the head because my hands tend to shake sometimes. And you don't have to do it this way. Then about the center of it, I put in the eye. The more detail you put on your eye, the better the final project will be. Just keep in mind to keep your pencil light so that it won't show through the painting or that you can remove it with eraser later if you need to. For the upper line of the beak, I used kind of a flattened out M shape. As you can see, it looks like a little bit of an M and it looks like it's flattened out. You can work with that to see if you want to adjust it, but I thought that seemed to be a good way of expressing how to put that on paper. Then I went back and did the bottom of the head, kind of freehand that in. For this picture, I used the reference from my original painting, but you can definitely look online and get the image of a beak or an eye for a flamingo, just to give you an idea of how to do the beak. I don't remember which picture I used. I couldn't really find anything that I liked online that gave me the side view that I wanted, so I kind of worked it out by just penciling it in and then erasing whatever lines I didn't like for the original photo that I did. And this is the second photo that I did that I forgot to put in the first video. Once I got the beak to about where I liked it, I went back and added in the little nostril and then erased the little half moon shape I had above the beak.
once I got the head outlined the way I liked it, I went in and started putting in the outline for the body and other shapes. Now here I put in the little circle for the black in the eye and then the highlight of white. My pencil marks are a little dark, but I wanted it to show up well for you so you could see it. I explain later in the video that the pencil lines um, you can cover up with hard edges with the paint. Um, I usually like to keep it white so that it's not so hard to cover up. But here I just wanted to make sure you could get a good view of it. I'm using masking tape to hold this down on the table. You can use any kind of tape that comes off easy. This is all I had. I couldn't seem to find my painter's tape. But you want to secure it to the table so it doesn't move around. And I also use this to help stretch my paper. To stretch my paper, I use a paintbrush and clean water, and I just soak down the paper by applying the water, and then I will let that dry. for that to dry I get my paints all prepared. This is a Master Touch pan paint set from Hobby Lobby, the watercolor, and then a crimson red or any deep red from the tube and I put some on the cover of my pan set. I'm going to be using some Master Touch Premium Watercolor Burnt Sienna and then my aqu Aquamarine Blue which makes a great black and I'll explain that later in the video as well. Here I'm using a flat brush and a filbert brush. Any brush that you feel comfortable using, you can use to get this project done. And this one is a zero zero brush. It's kind of like a fine liner brush and drawing gum to help with preserving some of the white of the paper. Using my number two pencil, I'm just drawing in random shaped stars for my flag.
using the drawing gun and an old disposable paintbrush, I just applied it to my stars. And what this does when it dries, then you can remove it and it will leave all the white underneath. keep the white in the flag part, I used masking tape. This is easier than doing the drawing gun because it's not as expensive and easier to remove. And with the masking tape, I tore it so that I could get the prep edges on to give that rustic look to the flag. Once I finished with the masking tape, I went back with my old brush and applied the drawing gun to the eye and the beak and a little bit up on the head. I then proceeded to switch out my brush to a bigger brush which is disposable as well, and applied some random drawing gun across the paper. Once the drawing gun was dry, I started to color in the eye. And what I used was the yellow from my Coke can of watercolor paint. What I did was take a little spray bottle and apply the water to the Coke can and that will nicely just paint itself and get it out quickly and evenly. Then I went around and highlighted with a little bit of black on the edge just to give a shading effect. Once I got the eye to the point that I liked it, I wanted to leave it alone to give it a chance to dry. So I applied a lot of water to the feathers and applied diluted crimson red to that area that I wet down with water. Then I did the same thing with the blue and applied it to the flag. This paint that I used came from the tubes that I showed earlier. Once the flag is all dry, then we will proceed on with the beak. I have some drawing gum at the tip of this beak. So I'm applying water around that drawing gun and I'm going to apply straight black from my cake pan set. I'm applying it to wet paper so that it will bleed out and not give hard edges. Here I 
rinsed my brush out and came back with a damp wet brush and applying more paint to the line around that drawing paste or drawing brush. Here I rinsed out my brush and have some clean water or damp brush and come back and try to spread out some of that black. Now I'm applying more water and coming back with some more black paint to highlight that beak. I continue that process until the beak is highlighted. At this point I cleaned out my brush and came back with a damp brush and started to spread out the black a little bit to give it a gray look. Then I added a drop of the red paint that come out of the tube on top of it. Now it's dry, so I'm going to try to make this as easy as I can possibly do. So what I'm going to do is take my blues, I'm going to spray them down a little bit, and I want a darker blue, and I'm going to just highlight the stars. And the highlight will help get rid of the pencil mark and also brighten these up a little bit and keep that nice light background. I'm going to take a flat brush and just load up my brush and I think I might try this on a piece of paper first just to see if it's the color I want. Yeah, that looks good. It's a dark one. Yeah, perfect. And i spray that a little bit more. We'll take this maybe some more So just go over some of that. I'm just experimenting again, like I said, to see what works best. And I might redo this again. Now I have a pencil line up here, so I'm just going to go along here and try to hide that. And I might it down here too just to do a little separation. I wanted to leave some of that background. That may be too much, but we'll see what happens. So the other thing I wanted to do was just kind of highlight up the marks right here with the blue. So just taking a little bit on my brush and kind of running along the edge of the tape because I want a little bit of that rough look to it. That way it will highlight my blue flag and I know it looks pretty bad right now it usually does in the beginning and as I've said before in other videos it's like a hot mess
And of course, with any art, I mean, you can be perfect. And I usually have that problem of being perfect and striving for that perfection. But really, the best work comes out when it's not perfect. So when I experiment, it makes me really nervous. But sometimes it comes out really nice and I like it. So it's kind of like letting yourself go and have a little freedom with it. And it's kind of hard for perfectionists. So sometimes I wet my brush and whatever paint's still left on it will leave some color where I want it. And if I need to load a little bit, I'll load my brush and then add some water just to dilute it so that when I put it back on the paper, it's not as harsh. And then if it looks good, then I can go back and add a little bit more. And I'm hoping to get a good rustic look along the edge of the tape and that's why I wanted to put it along here to get that rough look when I peel the tape back hopefully it will leave some line there and I'll probably go ahead and do that with the red so I want the solid red from my pan paint and so I'll spray this up I'm not sure which color I want so I'll probably start with this dark one first and then test it out over here I still probably have a little blue in my paint but that's okay because give it a little look of the blue in there so it will give a not so bright but more tone or what am I saying warm color or warm feel to it yeah that don't look too bad I guess And I just keep wetting the brush to make sure it keeps my color rich. I'm trying not to cover all my undertones that I put on. It's really hard for me because I always have to struggle with trying to get everything so perfect and I want to try to stay to the colors and it's always been a struggle. But I was hoping to do this just to have fun with it. Kind of giving a purple color now, so I'll probably rinse my brush and try again. I want to put a little 
idea or a hint of feathers right here. So I'm going to try something different. What I might do is um, practice with a different brush by taking this one. I think it's a filbert. I don't know, I'll have to look that up. And seeing if I can do more of a feather because I don't want to make it too complicated and to see what I can do with it. So if I wet that brush and load it up with some of that red and I'm going to see if I can do it this way or this way. It always works better on the practice paper than it does on the real project. And it's so frustrating, but lots of practice. Okay, I'm gonna try with the red. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. And I wanna do it on mostly where I have pencil marks because I want to cover up my pencil marks. my brush feels too dry I'll just wet it and then dump dip it into my tray and again I'm just playing around with it I um, to see what happens. that dry and what I'm going to do is maybe work go back and work on the head a little bit I might keep it a light pink so to keep my light pink I'm going to go back to my diluted color but I'm going to apply water to the head first and then put this on so get this nice and wet first to start then I'll rinse my brush and wet the head and there's still a little pink in my brush which is good that's fine that's what I wanted and I'll just darken it up. And I want the darker shade to be right where my pencil line is. So I do want to hide that. And keep it light in the middle and then dark here again where the pencil is and I'll darken that up more with some mixed gray when I get back to it and then my brush is still got some paint in it so I'm going to just water down my brush and keep applying it 
and spread that light pink over. And I might try and keep the white around the eye. That may change when I get back to it, but. And I like the color right now, and it's really pink. And I might darken that up around the edges, but right now I'm thinking this is really dark, so I don't know if I can spread some of that out with a little paint, which is okay. I mean, it's not that bad because I want that flag to come out or give that hint of the flag. But I might be able to just brush it out some. But I don't want a lot. And I'm going to give it a little bit of feathers if I can spread that paint. Like, move it along to look like feathers. Different shades of feathers. And I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it is moving some of that paint out. And I want that, so, and it's looking better to me. I think when I'm said and done, it'll be okay. When I highlight the head, it will bring out more of that pink and it will look so much better. So everything else will be dark and the head will be lighter. And that's what I kind of wanted anyway. So it will be a focal point, but it will be in the lighter range. So if everything else is dark and the head's light, it should draw your attention to the head. Okay, from this point, you can let it dry, and then we can come back and finish up the little details on this. In this case, I've already let it dry and took a break, and so now I'm just going to start finishing up the details. And if you want, you can come back to it and after yours dries. So I'm going to peel off all the tape and see where I'm at with my highlights of white and go from there as to where I want to put in extra highlights. And I want to re be real careful with my tape because I don't want to pull off my edging that I wanted, that rough look. It kind of looks not as random as I wanted. It was more like I got it too perfectly lined up and that's not the look I wanted but I think it will do in this case because when I go back and do another picture and try something different then I can learn from these mistakes. Okay. Now the masking tape that I got on here, you can just rub it off. Make sure your hands are clean. That way you don't leave any smudges. I kind of like the look of that better than I did the tape. And that may be something I will do next time is do just masking tape instead of tape. It seems to look a lot better. It's kind of the look I wanted. It does leave kind of a mess, but and I'm gonna take it off the bill or the beak 
because I want to see where I need to put my highlights in. It almost looked better with the masking tape left on, especially on the beak, but we'll fix it up, hopefully. Now that looks a lot better. Because I was thinking it was so bright before it didn't look good. But I like the look of it now. look good too. Yeah, that's nice. That's better than I expected. And since this is so quick and easy and I wanted it nice, quick and easy that I can always come back and make another one and do something different. Oh yeah, much better. I really like that. Okay, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to. Make sure everything's off there. Now all I gotta do is clean up the face a little bit and that would be to highlight this area probably darken it up with a little pink add a little bit of gray a mixture of gray um, I like the blue um, which I think I the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna and or I just might do pink and add some black. All right, let me dust all this off and take a moment break and I will be right back. Okay, I cleaned all that off. And of course, it probably wasn't a break for you guys, but sorry about that. I didn't mean it like that. Um, but I had it cleaned off and I came back, so Everything really looks good, and I don't really want to mess with it too much. I think what I want to do is just highlight up around the head and the eyes. Um, not a lot, but I might just water this down and add a little bit more pink. just where the shadows will be. And I don't want too much. I really would hate to ruin this now at this point, which I have a tendency to do, overwork something. And it's very frustrating. So if I can put the dark, darker paint in here, then I could smooth it out with just a damp, wet brush. I might put a little black in there. Yeah, that don't look too bad. And then wash out my brush and try to move that along. And there's other ways of probably doing this.
but this is what works for me. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Try to hide my pencil marks. Right, not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit and come up under this neck. I'm gonna try to keep that lighter without a lot of black. And I wanna keep that shading there because I like the contrast between this part and this. So if I can keep as much of that shading, it'll make me oh so happy. Just kind of flick my brush to give some feathers. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe the camera pick it up a little. I will darken this up a little bit up here some more. I just want a rough edge, I guess is what they call it. A rough edge up here. So I'll make sure I wet the area good because I don't want it to give me a hard edge on the inside. Right there's a little bit of the hard edge, so I can see if I can wipe that out with a wet brush. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush and wet this some more. Because I do want another light hard edge up here. So on this edge here, I didn't wet this part. I just kept a thin line because I want the paint to go that, down that thin line. Just to give me that hard edge I want. Okay, how was that? It might be a little too dark. So I'll rinse out my brush real well. And just dab it on a cloth and come back and try to draw that out some. That's too much. Take that water up. All right, then I can flick that out and give it some feather look, a feathery look. Okay, that's better. Yep. Okay. Now, I do want to... I gotta wait until that dries right there. But I do want to dampen this area and try to make some hard edges in there. So I'm gonna let that dry on that area. This is slightly damp, so I'm still gonna work with this. 
because I want to add some water and even if I cause a bloom that's fine I'm not very good at doing blooms regardless of how much I've tried so if I get one I'm happy but I'm going to try to darken this up just a little bit And that might give me my hard edge I want. How does that look? Okay, that's pretty good. Might be a little too dark, but that's on the underside. That's fine. I'm going to use black around that anyway. Maybe I can draw that out with a negative damp brush. That's fine. I'm not going to mess with that anymore. All right, I'm going to let that dry and then come back to it. So we are dry now. So what I'm doing is mixing some black with my French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. So what I want to do is highlight more of the beak and around the head and the eye. And I don't want to put a lot of time in this because it's just something I want to do quickly. So I'm going to just mix up this, these two colors to get my black that I want. Plus, it will be a variety of different shades and I can mix it in with my pink. So I'm going to get a nice black. Just a damp brush. And that's about the color I want right there with a little blue. Warmy. Warm. Warmy. I don't know where that come from. I apologize. A warmer color. And I think when it comes to the color wheel, I'm always on the opposite spectrum. Like when they say warm, I think it's cold. And when it, they say cold, I think it's warm. So forgive me if I'm getting it confused, but comforting. That's the word. How's that? Comforting color. So I'm going to try with this little brush. Um, I think I had some masking fluid still on the eye. So I'm going to take that off. Okay, that was not, that was dry, but I don't know why I, it smudged like that. I think I can fix it. That was weird. It don't look too bad though. Okay. going to stress about it. I'm going to try to fix it. I'm just outlining the eye. And when you get the paint almost out of your brush, you can dampen your brush. And then you'll have a little bit of uh, a gray color. 
So you can come back in and add some highlight by spreading that black. Or the gray and it will add some gray to the yellow and that will make it look like there's a highlight and I'm using my double zero brush and I'm just gonna highlight this white part of the eye And you can come back with a damp brush. You can wet the brush a little bit and dab it on the cloth to get the most of the paint out and just kind of highlight that into the upper eyelid to give it some shadow. And you can try highlighting around the eye, around the color of the eye so that way just a little bit of paint in there will give that highlight and you won't get a lot of black paint to mess up your color just trying to fix my little mistake I had <sighs> Very frustrating when you think it's dry and it's not and try to get your masking tape off. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. I'm just gonna go back here to the beak. And add the water. I'm not gonna cover that where my masking tape was. Keep that dry. But we're gonna just highlight around it with some black or the mixed black that we got That looks so much better. Now, rinse your brush out. We're gonna add a little bit of water up the beak, right where the line should be for, and be careful about your highlights because you wanna keep those preserved. Now, this is where I had the shadow before, so I wanna come up into that a little bit and I don't want a lot of this black. I just want to start down at the bottom here and kind of push it up to form my line. And then on dry paper up here at the top, 
Make sure you just have a damp brush because we're going to make this line very thin and come out to connect with that wet line right here. Yeah. And then rinse your brush. really well make sure that all that's gone that color and then we're going to wet down here we don't want a hard edge only the hard edge we want is right near the beak and up under the neck or up under the head and wet it out beyond where you want to put the paint because you don't want hard edges up into the neck. And then add some of that mixed black we did. And go right here along the edge. Make sure to preserve that highlight you put in before. Okay. It looks a little dark, probably darker than what I wanted, but when it dries, I think it will be okay. And then rinse out your brush, and you want to try to take some of that up into here to smooth it out just a little. And rinse your brush again and just maybe bring up a little bit into here. Alright. Alright, rinse your brush. We're going to let all that dry. And we're going to come back with a brush to wet this area here. And don't try to stay away of that as much as you can, but we're going to wet this area. And we're going to come back with some more of that pink and just highlight this edge. Because we do want a sharp edge right here if we can get it. To cover up the pencil again. Rinse your brush. And it looks like we might need a little bit more up here. Make sure your brush isn't too damp. Or dripping with water, I should say. And highlight all this. Or dampen all that. Sorry, I didn't mean highlight. And then take some more of that pink and go along this edge. I have a really dark pencil line right there and I want to get rid of it. And just stay away from the edge of the water and keep it toward the area you want that hard line. And let it bleed out into the water that you put there. And then just rinse your brush. And if there's just a slight amount of paint left, and we can just put it over this part and bring some of that down in over the eye. We still want to reserve some of that white around the eye, but just add a little color. 
All right, and we're gonna let that dry and then come back to it. All right, everything's dry and now you can darken up the highlights if you want with paint and continue doing the process that we talked about like um, damp brush or even wetting the area and putting more of the paint over this and just keeping your hard edges right around where you want the highlights or you can go ahead and do um, colored pencil which is watercolor colored pencil and the reason why I like those is because if you want to change it up a little bit and add water later and add more color you can and it will bleed and blend so this is all just practice and um, trial and error on this particular picture so what I want to do is highlight everything with pencil and you can take the watercolor pencil and just check it out on the paper that you have and see which colors you want for highlight. And this particular brand that I got is the Fine Touch from Hobby Lobby. And so I'm going to use kind of the darker colors and work in here and you just circle it with a light touch and it does smudge so you got to be real careful so you can do that if you want and then to blend it you can just add a little bit here on the edge and then to blend it, you can take an old brush, paintbrush, and put a little water on it and blend it out. And that's kind of why I like watercolor. The other thing you can do is take a fine marker, pencil, um, fine marker, um, ballpoint pen or felt pen and highlight the areas that you want. All right, the other thing I have is the Bic Intensity Fine Felt Pen. And this is pink and I'm gonna try to see how that works um, as far as highlight. It may be too bright, but if I just Kind of make it look not so perfect. Maybe it'll look different. I'm not sure if I like it, but it's okay for the underside. Just flick it a little bit to. Yeah, that's not bad. I think if too much of it, um, it would not look right. But like I said, you can use the paint, which might be better. This is just one of those quick projects that I wanted to put together and try out and I just wanted to share it with you and that don't look too bad but I don't think I want to use it for everything I think I might just go back to the paint um, here is my little precise V5 RT pilot pen and I'm going to use that to highlight some around the eye mainly and the nose but these usually work pretty good if you want intense black. And paint would be my next choice if I didn't have this. But I think this just saves me time. This just saves me time. So I'm going to just go ahead and do this. And it's precision.
I thank you for joining me and um, I hope your project come out great and I really appreciate your support and checking out my channel and I think I'll leave it there and just kind of mess with it a little bit more um, but I think I'm pretty happy with it for a quick project and for the 4th of July and for those who love flamingos and thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day and I like to hear from you and let me know how this project come out for you thank you and bye for now